So I've been getting into Marvel a lot lately, as you guys probably know. But when I was going through my minifigures the other day, I realised I had barely had any Spider-Man stuff. And to give you a little bit of backstory about me, I grew up with Spider-Man. The 90s cartoon was the first stepping stone I took into getting into Spider-Man and Marvel in general. The 90s cartoon just had that charm about it that made me want to continue watching and eventually I watched the entire show and moved on to other things like the Spider-Man comic books and found out there was a whole multitude of Spider-Man stuff from the comic books to the live action TV show to the 90s cartoon. Spider-Man was everywhere when I was a kid. I even remember going over to my cousin's house just to watch their videotapes of the live action Spider-Man show. I bet a lot of you guys don't even know what I'm talking about when I say that. Yeah, this, this, this was a real show and I used to love it. But eventually we got through to the Sam Raimi films and now all the way up to the Tom Holland films, cementing Spider-Man as my favorite Marvel superhero. With Iron Man coming in a close second, I thought I should buy some Spider-Man sets to show my love for this character. So I got in the car, I went down to my local shop which sells Lego, and I took a look at their Spider-Man range. And as you guys probably know, the 2020 and 2021 Spider-Man wave have been a bit, hmm, childish. Even the larger display sets seem just too childish for me, especially somebody who enjoys the display sets over something like the Play ones. But then LEGO went and announced something big. LEGO said they were going to make one of the largest modular buildings that they had ever made, and not only that, they said they'd theme it around Spider-Man. And I thought to myself, hey, this is going to be the set of all sets. And some of you keen-eyed viewers would know that I haven't released a Daily Bugle video, even though I definitely bought one, as you guys saw it in my June 1st haul video. Now why haven't I built that Daily Bugle yet? It's because of this video. Now with most LEGO themes, I have one set that sort of encapsulates the theme in general. For the MCU, I've got my giant Hulkbuster mock made by Ransom Fern. For Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, I've got my nice little chessboard plaque model that I really love, and instructions will be available for this model soon. But for Spider-Man, and I wanted to specifically tailor the comic book side of Spider-Man, as I've kind of got an MCU version, and I feel like they've made a lot more minifigures for the classic Spider-Man comics, so I want to kind of tailor into that theme a little bit more. I want to take this Daily Bugle concept and elevate it to the next level. Obviously, Spider-Man and the Daily Bugle go hand in hand together. There is no getting around that. That is the mock that I'm going to be making, a Daily Bugle mock. But it's not just modifying the Daily Bugle set. There was that concept and then there's taking it to the next level. We're going to be taking it to that next level in one of the biggest modification series that I have planned for this channel. So many modifications that I don't actually have time to put them into one video. Hence why they're going to be separated into six weeks or six parts. So welcome to part one, where we explain the plan of what we're going to be doing over the next six weeks to make the Daily Bugle set a centerpiece of a home, something similar to the UCS Falcon you see from Star Wars, and truly encapsulate the essence of what I like to call a true Spider-Man comic book set. Now to the bit you've been waiting for. I firstly wanted to set up a few rules for myself. First off, this set has to be big. Not saying that the original set isn't big anyway, or encapsulates the essence of Spider-Man, because I believe it does, but I do want this set to be massive. I want it to feel like if you were a minifig and you were stood at the top of this building, all of the things at the bottom would look like ants. And the way we're going to do this is we're probably going to extend that reception. That reception area at the bottom there is definitely one of those things that I think we're going to change, and if there's nothing there on the actual set, we'll try and make some form of light fixture, and we'll try and make a nicer reception than just the one that we've got at the moment. Obviously having that extra space is going to be really useful. Obviously we're going to be extending the building somehow, I'm still yet to figure out how we're going to do that, whether we rebuild floors and just stack them on top of each other, or whether we just brick link a bunch of windows and do it that way. Either way I'm sure we'll figure it out in part two of this series. And finally the roof. Now the roof has a lot of details on there which I quite like, I like the big daily bugle sign and I like the antenna tower that's on the top. However, I do want to make that antenna tower slightly bigger, and I also want to create some form of police detection tower like they have in the Spider-Man games. I think that's a really cool idea and a really cool reference to the Spider-Man games, which we'll put into this as well. Another rule I wanted to say is 100% Lego parts. No structural parts, no fake Lego bits. We're all sticking to Lego here, and that's the same with minifigures. I know that some things can get a bit more detailed if you use custom parts, but we're not going to use custom parts. But we can use other printed elements that Lego make already if we wanted to swap out Lego minifigure arms, legs, heads, etc. Rule number three is I need to make space for lighting. The only non-Lego piece that I have decided to use is the fact that I can light this building up. I want to give this building a lot more life and to do that the best way is lights. 
I've been dabbling in light kits for a while and this one provided by Light My Bricks is going to be the one that is lighting up most of this Lego set and considering they are sponsoring this series by providing these lights to me, be sure that you're going to hear that name again and if you guys really want to you should check out their website, the link is in the description below. They honestly make some of the best lighting kits that I've ever used with a massive range of different effects boards, LEDs, other DIY components and full on lighting kits for different Lego sets. If you guys have a Lego set that you would like to light up, use Light My Bricks. The link is in the description below if you guys want to check this out. I feel like that's a good set of rules to stick to for now. If more things come up in the future, I'm sure we'll get to them. But for right now, I'm happy at where we stand. Another thing I'd like to do is expand the amount of cars that we've got here. Maybe build another taxi, maybe build some other cars. And if we have room, we'll put in a road plate. But at this point, I'm not sure if we'll have enough room for that. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Obviously, we're going to be filling this up full of minifigures putting minifigures on each floor and maybe adding some extra minifigures to this building to make it a true Spider-Man comic set. Obviously I want to fill all of this full of accessories and fill it full of references from other Spider-Man movies, comic books and shows. That shouldn't be too difficult as we'll probably be redoing a lot of the interiors of this building, but that should be in part 3. The reason this part is called the building is because I thought it only fair to take a look at the actual building before we jumped in and did all of these mods, as when I made the plan I didn't actually have the building constructed, so I wanted to make sure that with the building I could do the mods that I wanted to do, and I'm happy to say that most of them I can. I also just wanted to say that I'm happy to admit when I'm wrong, and this building is, is, is so damn cool. <laughs> I made a video a while back saying that I didn't really like this and I thought just a big grey building is not going to be satisfying to build at all and it was repetitive, I'll give it that, but that point still stands. But damn, isn't this a satisfying build. It's so cool to just see it all constructed and how surprisingly comic book accurate it truly is. There have been several iterations of the Daily Bugle in, in Spider-Man comics and other variations in the Spider-Man movies and comics. And now having this one constructed, I can see where the designer has really tried to incorporate different versions of the Daily Bugle into this model. I mean, the building itself looks to be like the classic comic book version, where it actually stands a lot taller than most of the other iterations. Obviously, we all know the Sam Raimi version, which I think the minifigures are slightly inspired by. And those of you who asked me to make the building a triangle in the comment section, that's that's not what we're doing. But the one that was most interesting to me is that I think the signage has been taken off of the PS4 version of Spider-Man. This building is not as tall as any of the other iterations of the Daily Bugle. It's still a pretty big building, but it's not as tall as the other ones. And to be honest, I actually see a lot more similarity with this Daily Bugle than I do a lot of the other ones. I don't know if that was intentional, probably was, but me wanting to sort of create a more comic book accurate version has now changed into I wanted to sort of make my own version of the Daily Bugle, almost combining the game PS4 version with a classic comic book version, which is what they've tried to do in the original set anyway, so I don't think this would be too difficult of a task to do. But I don't really know much about buildings, so I can hand you over to somebody who does know a lot about the New York sort of architecture style, and maybe that can help us determine the style, whether we're going to change the signage, change part of the building, or something along those lines. Hey guys, Claire here, The Plastic Architect, and I wanted to talk a little bit about this typical and awesome New York style Daily Bugle skyscraper. Now, you can say it's a skyscraper because if you compare it in scale to the rest of the buildings that we get, unfortunately, it is a little short at four stories. You can probably usually see a skyscraper anywhere from 20 to 60 and up. Now, I do love the exterior fire escape, the signage on the top, the radio tower, and the water tank. Those are really cool and typical. I like it when utilities and functionality is shown on these buildings. Now, it's actually shown as a typical concrete building, which means that the structural system is on the interior of the building with columns and thick floor assemblies carrying beams and other insulation in there so that the exterior of the building is actually really light and you can have large windows. Now in New York, because of the temperature fluctuations between hot and cold, typically a wall assembly is actually pretty thick because it has to, you know, keep everybody hot or cold on the inside. So I think that's the only thing I would say is inaccurate. Other than that, it is so awesome. It's so cool. We have nothing like it. And as an architect, I think this is one of the best sets that Lego has ever done. Thanks Claire for that little segment on New York buildings. If you guys want to check out her channel, the link will be in the description below. But that just solidifies to me that I definitely want to make this building taller rather than wider. I know a lot of people were suggesting in the comment section of the previous video that we make the building wider, but that would require a lot more construction than making the building taller. 
and I think at least with this series, I want to focus more about making the building taller and fitting the insides, messing with more minifig sort of side of things and trying to get more dioramas going and more life in the build, rather than reconstructing the entire set. There are definitely still some more ideas that I want to do. For instance, I want to create like a green screen room where they might be filming this outside sticker. I definitely want to tile off some of the areas that aren't tiled off right now, like the balcony and the roof, all of which I believe is possible. But still the main thing I want to do is make this building taller. Like Claire says, this is reasonably short for a skyscraper, and although I'm not planning on doing 60 floors, I think 8 would look a lot more minifig scale, quote unquote. Now to address something that I said in the previous part, making these buildings taller, I wasn't sure how we were going to go about it. Well, now I do. I firstly constructed a floor in studio. As these floors are a lot more complex than I thought, build-wise, the part count ended up being a lot more than I thought, meaning if I wanted to order just one of these floors from the UK alone, I'd be looking at something like 115 pounds, and that just doesn't work out in the grand scheme of trying to save money on this build. So we have to think of a plan B for that, but still keep something that's reasonably strong. Now, keen eyes watching this video would notice that I have not stuck any of the stickers on my set and also don't have any of the minifigures installed. And trust me, there's a reason for that. It was paramount that I tried to save money, so back when I originally got this set, I actually sold all of my marble figures from this set. I knew this video was a video that I was truly passionate about and wanted to make for you guys, so I sold all those figures, and, well... <laughs> Yes, this is how we're saving money. Not only will we get all of our minifigures back, I also sold all my minifigures for £200 when they first came out, and I've still managed to save a few of them. I sold all those figures so I could buy a second Daily Bugle so we could easily make this building eight stories high. So instead of spending £100 on each floor, making a total of £400, I only spent £275 on another Daily Bugle, getting all of the pieces that I needed, and not only that, I saved £200 by saving the minifigs. So I got this Daily Bugle set for £65. And then people ask if I actually put back in the money that I get off of Bricklink and my website and stuff like that. Yes, 100%. I do this to make more content. Lego is not cheap. And I just want to throw a quick shout out to the members as they're actually giving the extra money for me to buy these sets and make content like this series for you guys. If you're considering becoming a member, press the join button next to the subscribe button and pledge just from as little as $1.99. It truly does help make content and you get a bunch of benefits for it. Like sneak peeks, full desktop backgrounds of my renders, early thumbnails and other extra content. Just press that join button if you're considering it. Just look at the prices. It doesn't automatically lock you in when you press the button. Now, this was the easiest way to save all of that money and still get all of these bricks. So I'm going to get on to building the second Daily Bugle now. So so this week, it's been tough, man. I wanted to get a lot more done than I actually got done. I usually take quite a bit of time to build these Lego sets and giving myself a two day limit to build this second Daily Bugle set, which is basically where the previous episode left off. It was pretty tough considering Considering I'd already made one of the sets prior to this, being in last week's video, I felt building the second one getting super repetitive, especially with that many windows. I even got Miss Bricks to help me out and build an entire floor just so it wasn't as repetitive for me, and I'm glad she did because it sped up the second building quite substantially. So massive shout out to Miss Bricks in this case. But hey ho, we got the model done. And I must say, when I have these two built and next to each other, I really did notice how much of a difference the minifigures actually makes to the model. It makes the set look so much more alive, but arguably a lot more cluttered than obviously the one without all of the figures and I think those of you modular people who just want this as a skyscraper for your cities I think this is a fantastic option if you just sell all of the Marvel stuff obviously for us we're going to be double stacking it so hopefully that will make it look less cluttered and give us a bit more room for our minifigures that we've got in this set and hopefully some extra ones I'm worried about making it look too cluttered now but the time has finally come to start combining these models together and damn, this was harder than I thought. The model is built up in sections to make it easier for stacking and getting things down for play. This made stacking the upper floors incredibly easy. All you have to do is put one on top of the other and it holds like it was meant to be there. But of course, we wanted to double stack the entire building and that means tackling the reception. Now, the reception was not built to just be stacked on top of another reception. So tearing the reception off of the base plate and just putting it on top of the other one was not going to be an option. First off, I ended up messing a lot of this up. I started by taking it off of the base plate and then started removing Moving bricks at the bottom to try and line it up with the bricks that were on the top of the other daily bugle to try and make them line up when I realized that this reception even though it's going to be incredibly tall is just going to have to be sort of slap banged on top of the other one and actually studded into place so it's not going to be easily removed 
like the other floors above it. You probably could do it this way, but I was trying to use the majority of pieces from the actual build itself and not have to dive into my own personal collection too much, because if I'm honest I have barely any light bluish grey parts in my collection at the moment and my Bricklink orders haven't turned up yet, so I actually don't have any of the extra parts that I wanted to put into this model in terms of actually finishing the interiors, because that was meant to be today, but I guess we'll have to delay the interiors till part 5. This reception truly did give me a massive issue. These two parts were definitely not designed to go on top of each other. There was a lot of swapping bricks out, lots of removing of pieces. I've taken out the lift, so the lift isn't in the second half. So there's just not a random lift door halfway up the first floor. Speaking of random door halfway up the first floor, I also got rid of the back entrance and replaced it with some 1x4 light bluish grey bricks that I had in my collection. I was running out of bricks at this point, so I decided to start using some masonry bricks, but with the actual brick parts facing inwards so it would give me this nice tiled effect instead of the brick effect that you'd normally get by facing the masonry bricks outwards. I got these bricks a while ago when I was on the pad wall, and I'm really not regretting that anymore, and I'm thinking I want to put more of these throughout the build, but taking apart these floors is hard, and they really do just fall apart if you move anything that you're not supposed to, but I really do like this effect. While I'm getting on with that, I want to show you a few more more interiors that I have planned out a little bit better than the previous episode's paper room that we saw last week. Now I've gone ahead and refined this machine a little bit more to make sure that it's going to fit inside the building. I did try and add in a few more gubbins just to the extra surrounding parts to make it look like an actual functional room, so I'm excited to get these parts to turn up so we can actually install them into the final building. This is a boardroom, now I wanted to make sure that a boardroom was in there. Lego didn't include any sort of office space, probably as there's a lot more interesting rooms that you can make than a boardroom, but this is the building that I wanted to put in a boardroom, just to hold some of our extra minifigures. And then this is my favourite room, this is the editing bay, and also the room where J. Jonah Jameson is going to be filming the billboard that is on the front of the building. You can see here we've got a nice green screen, going to try and reuse some of the tiles from the other reception, as like I say, I don't want to be ordering too many parts if we can recycle all of these parts then we're going to be saving a lot of money and saving money on a build like this is key this build is definitely a lot more expensive than i thought and i have to give a massive shout out to the members that make these videos possible your little bit of extra contribution helps me invest in parts buy little add-on sets and even down to things like helping me pay for my editing program a lot of people don't really realize how such a little contribution can go so far as we have gained a few new members because of this series, I thought it only right to give back to them with an exclusive part 7 to this series, where we take a look at behind the scenes of it all, how I make the videos, what the editing process is like, how long a part will take me, and it will just be a nice all round behind the scenes video of all 6 parts. If you're interested in that and you want to see that video when it comes out, consider becoming a member for as little as $1.99 a month. Like I say, it really does help out the channel, and it allows me to buy extra things for this model that I wasn't going to build, but because of my awesome members, they've allowed me to build this extra add-on to this set, which is this. Now this is a caravan set from the LEGO City line, and honestly it's been a lifesaver. As I saw in the previous videos, a fair few of you were commenting that I should make a daily bugle van. And I really like this idea, I just didn't want to design my own van, as I don't have a lot of time between episodes to fully design my own vehicle. So being able to go out and get this set to essentially mod it would be a really cool idea, because we'd be doing two mods in one. So when building this, I followed the instructions, but as I built up, I changed a few things here and there, so it keeps the essence of the original camper van, but now it looks like this. We've changed a lot of things, but the basic shape has stayed the same. We've put a new bumper on it using some cheese slopes and some tiles. We've changed those nasty yellow cheese slope tiles to these nice clear one by one plates. We've got rid of all of the windows apart from the back two. And of course, we've got rid of the sleeping area on the top of the roof. Not only that, when I finished the car, I decided to tile off the entire roof. I'm thinking of putting one of those satellite dishes on top of this as well. It depends whether I have any radar dishes left over from the actual build itself. But I know these vans sometimes have extra stuff on the roof and I think that could be a cool look if we decided to go down that route. But these are the two side by side, you can see how much we've changed. And although we've kept the opening function of the door, I've put nothing in this van because I don't think it will ever be seen when we have the full building on display, but we can always go back and change it at a later date. I've also left these 2x4 tiles on the side here 
here as I want to stick the spare daily bugle sticker we're going to get from the build on the side of the van here to show that it's associated with the daily bugle set. Really awesome idea from the comment section. And now that that reception's done, it looks like this. It's a really good foundation to put the other modules on top of. I hope this is stable enough with these open windows as we're going to try and double stack this now to see how tall this building is actually going to be when it's done. Wow guys, this is insane. Somehow it's taller than I thought it was going to be, even though I measured both of the bugles so I technically knew how tall it was going to be. And it's really tall and I'm really hoping that when I light this building up, it fills in a lot of that dark space. And one thing I wanted to mention before we get into the minifig side of things is that my Bricklink parcels actually turned up. But all of the things that I wanted to do last week, I can now do. And I'll be doing the interiors and stuff between episodes. And I'll show you a little bit more in detail in part six when we actually display the final set. But I do want to finish one thing that I started in the previous episode, which was finish off this reception. I did order enough windows to fill in this disgusting gap and a one by one with studs on the side just to finish off that central bar and make sure it doesn't fall off like it's been doing for the past week. Another thing that would be kind of relevant to today's video is that I wanted to make sure I didn't have two exploded windows from the building as we all know the original Daily Bugle set has an exploded window on one of the floors as I've got two it means I've got two exploded windows now there's a load of tutorials on how to do this but you can actually make a fixed window out of this exploded one so I went ahead and I rebuilt this window into a fixed window as the green goblin does fly through this window and I don't want two green goblins in the set so it was only right to fix one of the windows and this is the finished window. Now that those things are off my mind I can jump straight into the minifigures of this set. Like I said from last week I didn't actually get to see many of these minifigures during the building process as I actually sold all of my minifigures from the first set and I only really built half of the second set just to speed things up but I must say I am super happy to have this many spy man I guess related minifigures as some of them are just blatantly not Spider-Man stuff but have appeared with Spider-Man in some form like Daredevil and Firestar being in Spider-Man's amazing friends and I made an argument back in one of my previous videos that I believed that some of these characters should have had more leg printing and I agree with this statement but I understand a little bit more now how Lego do their things and prioritize what figures get printing and what figures don't get printing depending on how many things that they have going on at the time and I've learned this information from Lego designers so I know that it's not false but even saying that there are still some figures in this set that I consider to be perfect minifigures and there are definitely minifigures in this set that I do really like more than others and definitely some that we can do some improvements on and just some straight up new additions thumbnail hasn't been lying to you maybe you should read that newspaper on the thumbnail once in a while I'm glad some of you guys have noticed that I've been writing on secret messages in there taking a look at the current minifig selection I would say in general this minifigure selection is very strong there are a lot of characters in here that I wouldn't have even thought about putting in a set like this and I'm glad we have two sets because definitely this amount of minifigures on that standard set can definitely look a little bit cluttered. And like I said last episode, I didn't want to do too many additions because I don't want to make the tower overly cluttered again and struggling to find places to put all these minifigs feel natural in this diorama. So I guess we'll just start with taking a look at some of the minifigures that I'm going to change a lot. Let's start with Peter Parker. Now I appreciate that we're getting an extra figure because Spider-Man and Peter Parker are in the same set and I guess you could use the excuse that it might be a sort of multi-dimension thing like a Spider-Verse situation going on but I really don't like the way this Peter Parker looks. The whole varsity jacket situation gives me more Eddie Brock vibes and I just don't think this looks like a Peter Parker type character even if they were going for a more comic book sort of style. So I'm way more likely to actually just have the Spider-Man in this set and kind of get rid of the Peter Parker as I kind of see them as the same character so I am going to go ahead and just not include the Peter Parker figure on my set and just have the Spider-Man instead. However there are a few little things that I want to do to this Spider-Man and with the new release of the What If series came the Spider-Man CMF. Now this figure is an incredibly nice figure. I think it's slightly too detailed to be a comic book Spider-Man but hence the reason I'm not going to take the legs and the arms off of this guy and put them on the current Spider-Man that we have in our daily bugle set however what i am going to take is the peter parker head that they included in this because i truly believe this encapsulates tom holland and also that peter parker vibe that i'm looking for in this set a worried face just really kind of says spider-man or peter parker to me and I don't like that hairpiece, but I've kind of always associated the Han Solo hairpiece with Peter Parker as it feels a little bit more messy, but also like he's tried a bit. Oh, I'm going to take the head off of this guy and put it on our current Spider-Man figure and put the mask in his hand. 
I'm also going to steal the bag off of the old Peter Parker, as if that's where his clothes are and he's just waiting for a place to go and web up his bag. We even have a place for him to do that. It's just down in the alleyway. But I think this Spider-Man is a much better fit and it kind of brings those two Peter Parker and Spider-Man figures together into one. I understand why the set has given you two different versions because you probably don't want to do this, but for me, I think this is going to be a better decision to try and create one cohesive set. And as this set includes Miles Morales, I thought we could also take a look at him. Now, this is the same Miles Morales that comes in the £9 Met, and I must say, I really do like this figure. However, there is one thing about it that really annoys me that I don't necessarily mind in the mech, but I do kind of mind here. As Miles Morales is often depicted as a younger Spider-Man, I would have loved to see this character use mid-legs just to make him slightly a bit shorter than all of the other figures, showing how new he is to the Spider-Man role. And these mid-legs from the Harry Potter series give it that little bit of extra red and black printing that I couldn't help but add to this figure. This Miles Morales fits in slightly better with the narrative that I'm trying to portray in this diorama that I'm trying to make. Another figure which I feel like really did need an improvement, and it's really easy to do, is Blade. Now, I have no idea how the hell they made this guy bold, and of all the images that I've seen of Blade, and also his comic book appearances and the film appearances, he's always had hair, just very short hair. And I understand this is slightly difficult to do on a Lego figure, However, again, thanks to that Marvel CMF that we got, came with a brand new hairpiece on Falcon, which just works so perfectly for this Blade figure. It still kind of makes him look old from the hair not even starting till pretty much all the way at the top of the head, which is exactly how Blade's hair is. I would have loved to see them actually debut this hairpiece in this set rather than the Marvel CMF, as I just feel like this is the perfect addition to this Marvel minifigure that I'm sure a lot of you now will have to do as well. Another simple hair change is Gwen Stacy. I really don't like this high ponytail. I don't know why they're giving it to her. I much prefer this lower ponytail that actually came on the Luna Lovegood CMF and probably a bunch of other characters that I can't think off the top of my head right now, but this just kind of gives her a better look and stops her looking more like just a blonde Ray, as they've used the same face print from Ray on this figure as well. Because of what I did to Peter Parker, you're probably thinking that I'm going to do the same with Spider Gwen, and that's actually not the case. I'd like to have Spider Gwen as well as Gwen in this set. If anybody asks, I'll just say that she's a Gwen from a different universe. Same with the Spider Ham figure, and just say that it's a reference to the Spider Verse film. But what I do want to do to this figure is give it a slight bit more detail, and with the new Amazing Spider Man and his friends coming out, and Gwen to be confirmed confirmed as one of the figures. I'm hoping they just don't give us the same figure and they actually give us some black legs with the blue ballet shoes and same with some pink spider webbing on the arms. I know it's a stretch, but for now I'm just going to put the Monica Rambeau arms on her. I know it's not 100% accurate, but it looks a lot better than just plain white arms. I did try and find some sort of blue accent with black legs, but I couldn't find anything. If you guys know any purest Lego legs that I could use on my ghost spider, let me know in the comment section. Now these two are straight up from mini superheroes today, so big shout out to him, but I've got the J. Jonah Jameson figure here as well as the black cat two really awesome figures, but two figures that definitely need that slight extra bit more detail. So for J. Jonah Jameson, I've got the grip hook arms, comes with this really nice shirt lining pattern, which just looks so much better on the figure rather than the plain white arms. And same with Black Cat. Using this cat costume, I can't remember what CMF this came from, we can basically just take the same Black Cat figure and give it that printing that it deserved on the figure to begin with, as well as giving it dual molded arms, as well as printing on the arms as well. A fantastic figure to finally have in Lego form, and I'm super happy that we got something like this, considering how overly sexualized this character actually is in the comic books. But moving swiftly on, I was going to try and find some dual molded arms and dual molded legs for Mysterio, as he's the next character on this list that I feel like really did need to be improved. He was actually one of the strongest categories for me that needed something like leg printing to give the sort of checkered pattern to his legs and also some form of boots. But unfortunately, he was just one of those characters that didn't make the luck of the draw for leg printing. But scrolling through the internet whilst trying to find these pieces, I found this set, now I had no idea that this set actually existed and the good thing is this set is still around and I think it's just about to retire as per the recording of this video but as soon as I saw them I said nah he doesn't need dual molded legs or dual molded arms he just needs these green effect pieces so I put them in my bricklink basket and they were way more expensive than I probably should have paid but at the same time they look incredible and I think now with my new camera set up and my new lights it almost makes this piece kind of glow which looks really cool on camera I highly recommend getting these pieces for your Mysterio before they go and get super expensive I don't understand why this set didn't include these pieces considering this is a 300 pound set this is a 40 pound set and considering they're being made at reasonably the same time this piece at least for me would have been a no-brainer to include but they didn't so now you got to go and get one i highly recommend going to get one before they shoot
shoot up in price. This neon green color, I believe, only came in that one set, so if you want one, go looking quick before people catch on how cool this piece is. Those are at least all the modifications that I wanted to do to the existing figures, and I can already tell this is going to be way nicer of a figure selection than the actual set. But I'm not done yet. Over the last couple of months, I've been buying figures here and there to include in this set, and although I would have liked to buy more figures, these old Marvel figures are incredibly expensive. But I managed to get my hands on a few old ones, but most of them are pretty new. Two of the newer ones on this list are Iron Man and War Machine. Now these ones both came in relatively newer sets. And they use the One Piece helmet because I feel this looks a lot more like the comic book side of Iron Man rather than the MCU version of Iron Man. And with Iron Man being a lot more prevalent in things like the newer MCU films and the newer comic books, I thought it nice to include an Iron Man figure and the War Machine figure just kind of followed suit. I got this similar looking War Machine from one of the UK comic foil bags and it basically is the same War Machine that goes with this Iron Man so I thought hey I'd include both on this set just somewhere subtly fighting an enemy or something like that. Now the next one is one that people were suggesting in the comments section and it's Craven the Hunter. Now I don't actually know much about Craven the Hunter. All I know is he has a new film coming out so I didn't want to pass on this figure and then the new film come out and it goes shooting up because it's the only Lego one we have. It's actually a really nice figure. I love the neck piece and like I say I don't know too much about the character. Pretty much my only knowledge of him is from the 90s cartoon but he's a great figure and I'm happy to have him as part of this collection. The next one is Ghost Rider. Now the new set with Ghost Rider and Spider-Man and the car was actually one of those sets that I was considering buying as an extra set to include into this one with the help from the members. The members extra support has allowed me to include sets that I wouldn't even have thought about putting in here. The last episode they helped me buy that camper van which we turned into the new Daily Bugle van. If you're unsure what members are, they are people paying that little bit of extra money to help the channel to help fund projects like this. Whether it be $1.99, $4.99 or $22.99 a month, the members gang are truly one of the things that make this channel tick and literally do help fund the videos that you're watching right now. Of course members do get a little bit extra content from me such as being able to use emojis in the streams that we do from time to time and with a lot more streams planned I think this will be a fun feature as well as access to the members chat on my discord server as well as a bunch of extra content over on that discord server such as HD wallpapers of all my renders and they even get a seventh part of this series going behind the scenes and looking in depth to how these videos are made. If you're considering becoming a member there is a link in the description that takes you over to that page or you can press the join button next to that subscribe button. I went on to Bricklink and I looked up Ghost Rider and I bought this version of the Ghost Rider. Now the reason I did this is I'm much more familiar with the Johnny Blaze version of Ghost Rider. I also don't think this version of Ghost Rider looks like a skeleton. And unless I'm wrong, which I don't know if I am, you'll have to correct me in the comment section, isn't this set based off of the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. version of Ghost Rider? You know, w the one with the big muscle car? I know he's in the comic book versions as well, but I just prefer the look of this Ghost Rider over this one. And besides, because I managed to find a good deal on the set, I also got Hobgoblin. Now with this Ghost Rider and Hobgoblin, I didn't actually get the bike, which is fine because I'll be modifying the glider to bring it up to sort of more 2021 standard. And I hated Ghost Rider's bike in that set. I'm going to build my own one, but I'll have a little bit of a look around on the internet to see what I can find some inspiration for. But overall, two fantastic looking figures. And although I have no idea where we're going to put this model, especially with the amount of cars that I've now got, and now we've got to add a bike to the mix, I can't wait till we actually have to think about where we're going to put these figures. Now when I said I sold all my figures, that was true. I did sell most of them, but I did have a few left over that just nobody was buying, so I took them off of the store. And I think you can kind of guess who they might be. And it was characters like Venom, Carnage, and a bunch of the civilian figures, because they basically don't use unique parts, or they come in a load of sets. And this is fine, it just meant I had duplicates of some of these characters, which was kind of annoying because I have no idea where to put them, and I didn't want to just take them out of the set. So what I decided to do is take some of my own part collection, and try and build some of the figures that you guys suggested in the comment section. So first off, we needed a driver for the Daily Bugle van. So I used one of my old Harry Potter torsos. I used a Stranger Things head and the same hat piece from the new stand lady in the Daily Bugle set. And this turned out to be a nice figure. And now we have a nice figure to drive our Daily Bugle van. We also needed another taxi driver because we now have two taxis. So with my pile of mismatched parts, I made this figure. He's a fairly standard figure. I made him using an old Ron torso and gave him a mobile phone from my accessories collection. Overall is a nice figure that's going to look great in the taxi rank as well as next to things like the Daily 
Daily Bugle Van and the Spider Buggy. I've also got Boom Pole Man. Now, he doesn't have a name because he's just Boom Pole Man. He's basically going to be in the green screen room where I have JJJ reading his news segment. I really like these headphone pieces of the Hogwarts Moments books, and I know he should be wearing them, but I don't have any like over the head pieces, so I thought this was the next best thing. Overall, he's a really nice figure. Again, fairly standard though, it's kind of just to fill up the room. Another unnamed character that you guys suggested was some form of security officer at the front desk. Now I completely agreed with this, so I went ahead and looked through my parts collection. I found this police torso, which kind of looks like a security type thing. It does say police on the back, but if I put him against a wall, you should be fine. But this is him. He's a really cool looking figure. It just looks like a fairly standard police officer, if I'm honest. But either way, if I use him as a security guard or an actual police officer, I think it's going to work out fine either way. And finally, we have two named characters starting off with this one. This is Eddie Brock. A lot of people were asking for him and I was putting in the comment section, but Venom already exists in the set and I didn't want to get rid of Venom, but I thought this would be a cool way of including both characters into this mock as I really do like Eddie Brock as a character and I really like him as Venom, but I thought if we made a Eddie Brock figure and gave him the Venom symbiote back piece, we could also add the head on there and make it look like he was talking to his symbiote self. I really like this figure and it's actually one of my favorites in this whole lineup. I also gave him a Daily Bugle paper because obviously he works for the Daily Bugle and I gave him the one specifically with Spider-Man on one side and then unknown on the other because they actually know who Spider-Man is. It was the next best thing to do, including symbiote Spider-Man. But undoubtedly my favorite character that I've created for this entire series was one that I ranted about so hard about not being included in this set when it's basically a Spider-Man comic set and it's Mary Jane Watson. I can complained so hard in that last video because I genuinely don't see why they didn't include her in this set. The reasoning they gave was because MJ is now being played by Zendaya. They didn't want to include MJ or Mary Jane Watson as a figure as to not confuse the audience it's being marketed towards. Frankly, I see this as a dumb argument because it's clearly based on the comic book side of things. So including a Mary Jane was at the top of my list for things that I wanted to do with this set. And I think I did a pretty good job here. I gave her the classic Mary Jane torso with the Spider-Man heart and then updated the figure to give her Hermione's face and legs from the Harry Potter CMF version 2 and then I believe the hair is off one of the Lego Batman CMFs. It was a really nice figure to create and it's definitely my favourite one out of all the custom jobs that I've done. Just to show you a failed attempt, I did try making an Electro figure using this old Doc Ock figure as a base but I just couldn't find anything that gives me a classic Electro looking face mask. I would love one day for them to make a Electro figure that is based on the comic book version and they actually give us a new mould for this piece as I can't see them really doing it any other way. I know people have done other ways, but they just don't look right if you ask me, especially because Electro is on one of the little papers. I'd love to see this kind of thing happen one day, as well as an MCU Matt Murdock figure. But now I believe this set has gone from 25 to 33 figures that we're going to have to find some form of display for in this set. Obviously, there are a few easy ones like the taxi and the Daily Bugle van. They're easy. The figures are just going to go in the cars, but without trying to make this set look too cluttered, I think posing all of these figures inside of it is going to be a challenge. I'm really glad that we double stacked this building as having that extra breathing room will definitely look good when I have all these figures installed. Well, let's start off with the most catastrophic thing that happened this week and probably the reason that this episode has been delayed. For those of you who didn't know, these episodes were always intended to come out on a Saturday. Sometimes they came out a little bit early if they were ready. Obviously, it being Tuesday today means this video is late. But the reason that this video is late is because as I was taking the model apart, I kind of slipped and all of the model crumbled in my hands and like the butterfingers I am, I, I just dropped the model that I was holding. Now thankfully this was just one section of the model and by one section I mean just two floors. We'll see what I mean in a minute with the whole sections thing. But yeah, it basically means I had to rebuild two sections which was a massive pain. I had just literally finished putting on most of the lights so it crumbling to pieces and me basically dropping it. I the deal for the night, I wasn't going to do anything more. But apologies for the delay but we're back now. So let's get into the interesting parts of what we actually did this week, apart from rebuilding the model. So a few weeks ago, I showed you this. So for those of you who didn't watch the previous parts and you're just watching this one for the fun of it, as we're going to have duplicate rooms because I bought two Daily Bugle sets, it was always intended for me to rip these duplicate rooms out of the model and then build my own rooms that I wanted to display. 
So earlier on in the week, I took these modules apart and started constructing my own little elements to go inside these floors. I especially loved building things like the newspaper printing room and the editing room. All of these cardboard boxes, which is the same technique used in the actual set, just makes it look like to me that they're packing up these newspapers to start going across New York and be delivered to all these newspaper outlets. And in fact, could be what we use our daily bugle van for. Maybe it's not a camera equipment van. Maybe it's actually a delivery van that delivers papers across the city. And this room is where they pack it all. The newspaper machine is honestly one of my favorite little builds in this entire thing. It's actually greatly inspired from Robin Hood Bricks' video, but then heavily modified to just make it work in the scene that I want to portray. Big shout out to him. The video for his machine will be in the description below if you guys want to go check it out. But obviously, I filled this room with the no crime newspapers. Now, obviously, I've had a spare set of newspapers. And because we get multiple no crime newspapers, I decided that the machine should be printing as many of these as possible. So you can see here the paper goes in and it comes out printed with the newspapers on it. And then it goes off to this conveyor belt to be packaged up into their cardboard boxes. Now, obviously, I wanted an editing room and this is what I came up with and transitioning into real life here. Now, I'll be doing a little bit of in-depth stuff on my website about the studio file. I may even provide the studio file for you guys if you guys wanted this over on my website when the series is finished. But just be aware that I didn't actually follow the studio files to a T. I didn't make instructions or anything. I just sort of looked at what I had and then tried to translate that onto my actual project but i must say i have seen a lot of you guys tagging me on instagram of your own green screen rooms and that inspired me to change a few little things here and there i think it turned out amazing and i'm really really happy with the way that this looks i basically just wanted to make it look like they were filming the billboard that was happening as if it was a live broadcast so I do plan to put J. Jonah Javison on the chair here and have Boompole Guy recording his audio. So that'll all happen inside this room, which you'll get to see next week, as well as a few other things that I have secretly planned. The last room on our list is just a simple boardroom. Now this table is not constructed very well, but it does the job. It's strong enough to actually be there, and I can't wait to put a few of the civilian figures around this, as if they're having some sort of meeting about the headlines they've got to come up with. And overall, when we add the figures to this build, I feel like it's going to come alive and turn a relatively boring room into one that I think is actually going to be pretty cool. The only thing I wish I could have done is add a whiteboard in this room, but I just didn't have the space, as if they were like brainstorming for ideas or something like that. Maybe something that we can look into for next week, but don't be surprised if you don't see a little whiteboard in this room. Another set of additions that I'd like you to see just before we jump into the main event was the Ghost Rider climbing up the side of the building. Now, climbing up the side of the building is kind of inspired from the film, because I believe he does do this in the film. I don't know if this is a trait that he just had in the comic books, that his bike can climb up buildings or whatever, but the the bike is designed in a way to look like it is scaling and riding up the building. The bike for this build is also inspired from the games that he appeared in. Now I know it's not an exact copy because some of those Wampa horns are like £5 each on Bricklink and I'm just not doing that, they're way too expensive. But overall I'm happy with the design of this bike, I made a lot of design changes from the game and I'm happy with the end result. The only issue I seem to have with this bike is it doesn't stay together very well, meaning it doesn't actually perform well as a bike, especially because this back tyre is incredibly loose because of the used part. So if you were building this, and once again it'll be in the studio file, don't expect it to be a good bike for riding on flat surfaces. This bike was designed because I knew it was going to be going up the building, so all it needed was to look like a chopper bike and be able to stick to the side of the building. There was also this glider, now I built this again based on the set that it was originated from. So the build is mostly the same, except I changed a few little things, I didn't like the flick fire missiles that it had in the original set. So I got rid of them, changed it out with some brackets and put these two one by one studs here. And if you want to, you can actually add some firing effects in there to make it look like he's shooting bullets out of his glider, which I thought was pretty cool. Not only that, I gave him these really awesome pumpkin bombs from the bridge battle set. Now that was the only set that this version of the pumpkin bomb came in this set. All the rest of them have pretty much been just orange heads with a flame piece attached to them, where this is the Ghost Rider head piece, which is a molded piece with a pumpkin bomb basically printed on. Now they're actually quite expensive on Bricklink, so if you actually want to give these guys these types of pumpkin bombs, prepare to shell out. But honestly, they were my favorite looking ones, and not only did I give it to Hobgoblin, but I also gave one to Green Goblin as well. And as you can see, I've modified the pole he's attached to, so it's now on a ball joint, meaning I can put him on the stud at the end instead of the two studs on the other end, meaning I can get a lot more posability out of him. And those of you with a keen eye can see that I've done this many a time throughout the building, giving us more opportunity to pose minifigures out in the air. But that's it for the additions. Now, I loved these parts. They add so much more versatility to this building, and I can't wait to get minifigures in it to really fill it up 
up and make it look awesome. But obviously that wasn't the main thing of this part. Obviously, as you guys would know, Light My Bricks is sponsoring this series and they've provided all of the lights that I need to basically light up my entire building. So not only did they provide me with a full Daily Bugle kit, which is actually one of their standard kits for the Daily Bugle unmodded, which by the way is a really nice kit. So if you guys haven't checked out their website already, you should totally go and check it out. If you've got a model that you need lights for, most of the time these guys will have it. And if they don't, they have a massive DIY range full of expansion boards, animation boards, and a massive range full of different LEDs. They also sent me one of their DIY kits. As like I say, this thing's double stacked. So we needed those little extra push to make sure we could light up this entire building. And even though I don't have much to show you in terms of the installation, I actually compare it a lot to sewing. Being able to weave LEDs through studs to make sure you've got enough clearance and make sure you've got enough wire to connect it to your expansion boards is actually incredibly therapeutic whilst installing a lighting kit. I did loosely follow their daily bugle instructions, but obviously with a model like this I had to adapt and basically ignore all of their cable management steps to make sure I could actually get the wires where I needed them to be. And although the cable management isn't necessarily fit finished and where I'd like it to be yet, all of the LEDs for the building is in place and I can basically take you round and show you what I've done and show you some scenes of how good this building looks when it's all lit up. I'm obviously not going to show you the full thing, make sure you subscribe to see next week's part because that will be the full reveal, but I basically want to take you around a little tour of the building and show you where some of these lights are and how they look. Now the reception area is actually my favourite area, this light underneath the door gives a great glow effect and these extra spotlights shining up onto the sign and the billboard which by the way are all genuine leg elements that they provide to you really do set the building off and make it look awesome. Obviously in every room of the building is going to be some form of ceiling light. Now the lights on the top floor are slightly dimmer. The reason I did this was because I don't want to actually put any minifigures in this top floor as I want to have JJJ and Betty Brant somewhere else in the building. So this is almost like a dimly lit kind of situation because no one's around to activate the motion lights. Now I could always change this out in the future for the brighter lights if I decide that I'm actually going to put minifigures up there but for now I like this effect and it makes the top floor look slightly more visually interesting as it's a different shade of color. Before we look at the top I just want to take a look at the back and I love that this attention to detail stays with the back considering I could imagine it be one of those things that other companies might overlook. There are still two spotlights shining on this sign, lighting up this sign and again matching all of the other signage on the building and this alleyway light as well as the balcony light are lit up in the same way and it really does give it a creepy and eerie effect, something only a lighting kit can provide on a Lego set. And now this is the roof, the Daily Bugle signage, I know it sticks out on the sides and I know people have a problem with that but I love the effect these spotlights give to it. And I know the spotlights kind of emphasize that it goes off the side of the building, but I don't care. This effect looks so good and I can't wait to have it displayed where I want to display it and really just have those spotlights shine on that logo. This is honestly one of my favorite parts about this lighting kit. And going up, it doesn't stop there. We have this mast and fire star. Now I love that the mast has a flashing light on the top and you don't need a separate board to do it. That's just a flashing LED that you put on the top there. And although I don't like these wires coming out the back of it and all up the mast and everything. Firestar just looks amazing done with these micro LEDs that I've never seen before. They're smaller than the standard LEDs that are already incredibly small. I love these little things. I need to see if I can order more of them to go in something like my Hogwarts Express. I think that'd be really cool. Overall, I love the way that the building looks now. I think it's just one of those things that I am so happy I attempted and I know that lighting kits can be a bit of a struggle, especially when you're creating one that doesn't exist and you're following your own instructions and you're just trying to make it work. I'm happy with the way that I got this to look and like my bricks modular system and their really helpful instructions did help a lot with this process. I recommend you guys check them out. The link is in the description. If you have a Lego set that you want to light up, like my bricks is the way to do it. So from previous weeks, we have basically finished the entire building and I don't really see much else to do. During the week, I tiled off all of the roof and did a bit of cable management, but this step was kind of unnecessary as when it's in its final display, I never plan on taking any of these windows off. So as long as the outside wires were tidy, I was relatively happy with how this looked. And you saw a few weeks ago that I bought these road plates. Now, unfortunately, don't fit in the display case that I want to put this in. So even though the road plates will be there in the full reveal video that I'm about to show, they won't be there in its final display. But it does mean that I have a road plate now for future projects if I ever need them. 
and you might be asking to yourself, Tommy, where the hell do you plan to display this thing? And I admit, that's a fair question. This thing is very big when it stands up tall. And to answer that question, I actually bought this IKEA display case a long time ago, and it's positioned right next to my bed. It fits nicely into this little gap next to my shelves, so this is where I plan to display this model when it's all done. It should be tall enough if I take out the shelves to hold the whole Daily Bugle in there, and there's a possibility that later on down the line, I can put some sort of vinyl backing on the back glass and really make it feel at home, especially when it's all lit up. Not only that, this IKEA cabinet will mostly protect this whole thing from dust, so hopefully this will stop me having to pull out the model every couple of months just to de-dust the whole thing. And not only that, this case is perfect for this kind of a model, and even though I can't necessarily see the back, I took this into account when placing all the figures. And speaking of placing all the figures, here's a little montage of me placing all of them in their final spots. Now that all the figures are in, I want to go through a few final things before I do the reveal here. Starting off with the amount of spare pieces that I had, I honestly wasn't expecting this amount of spare pieces in this build, especially from just the spares alone that I got from the actual build and then all of the extra pieces that I put into it. If you're going to attempt a build like this, I highly recommend getting some sort of organized system for storing your bricks because looking through these cardboard boxes that I had, was just an awful process and it made the building process so much more stressful than it needed to be. I'll go into a lot more detail on my behind the scenes part exclusively for members, but long story short, having a table or some form of place you can just keep this daily bugle while you're working on it is a lifesaver. Having a build half complete somewhere for six weeks alone is just insane and having a good place to store all this stuff, even when you're not displaying it, will definitely be something I take into consideration when doing future projects. And for all of you asking for the studio file that's going to be exclusive to members so if you want that studio file become a member and then it's free for you to download the link will be over in the community tab if any members want to go and find it speaking of future projects i am happy to announce that this is not going to be the last multi-part series that we do on the channel in fact i see it as the first of many and you guys watching this now will get to pick what we do as our next project I'm putting out a YouTube poll at the same time as this video, which will be over on my community tab if you guys want to vote on the next project that we take on, which will start in roughly three weeks time. Now, although these projects are going to be smaller than the Daily Bugle, we can't just go making skyscrapers every five minutes. We can stretch these out into more refined parts, get in more collaborators, and our overall be more healthy on my mental state as well as more healthy for the channel. Now, I've seen people talk in the comment section of these specific Daily Bugle videos about what I should attempt next. I've seen everything from an Avengers Tower to things like an Oscorp Tower to things like a Sanctum Sanctorum. And although these are really, really great options and something I'd love to consider doing in the future, right now I feel like some of these projects have already been done and I want to try something new and something that hasn't really been done before. So I propose three ideas. The most creative of these ideas is building a Spider-Man apartment, something similar to the Spider-Man PS4 games and other depictions of 
Spider-Man's apartment, we could really kit this set out with a lot of fun references and buy a lot more sets to make this more visually interesting. Option 2 is a lot more mock based and it would be the Avengers Airport Battle, something directly taken out of the Civil War film, which is arguably one of my favourite films. It's the airport battle, so we'd build a section of airport, probably have a plane, and we'd obviously build Giant Man, a mock I've had planned and have instructions for that I've been dying to test out and need an excuse to build him. So if you guys give me that option, we'll do that. And Idea 3 is a bit of a curveball because it's not Marvel related. I don't necessarily want this series to be defined by Marvel content only. So a project I'm actually incredibly passionate about would be building a Bowser's airship and modifying not only the set that we got previously, but really expanding upon the idea and turning it almost into a platformer. I have a lot of ideas for this project, but it will all be determined by you. So for the first week, I will put these three ideas head to head. And then in the second week, I will put the two winning options from that poll into a members poll so the members can truly choose what project they want to spend their money on and we'll go from there. Not necessarily saying that these ideas won't be done in the future as I plan to have these new projects done in the same sort of way we've done the Daily Bugle series so somebody could easily just wait six weeks and come back to the next project. I look forward to hearing the community and members results in the relevant polls and I hope you guys get involved as much as possible and keep this series going. I just want to thank all the new members that have joined. You'll be getting exclusive seventh part which is going to be available at the same time this video uploads. So if you want to see that and you're not a member already I highly suggest becoming a member. Not only will you get to be able to vote on the second poll You'll also get an exclusive video that takes you behind the scenes of this series. I'm really happy with it. It's a bit more personal, as well as all of the other things that members get, like exclusive wallpapers. Not only that, you get to come and say hi to me and a couple of my buds in the private members chats over on my Discord server. I also want to thank Sam over at Like My Bricks and Like My Bricks in general for just sponsoring this whole series. And I thank you guys for checking out their website. They've been an awesome company to work with. And I hope that we can work together on another project again very soon. And now, without further ado, the moment you've been waiting for. For. Thank you for joining me on the Ultimate Spider-Man mod. Thanks all of you for joining me throughout this wonderful process. Thanks to the YouTubers like The Plastic Architect and Sans for helping me out on some of the segments in this series. Make sure you hit that subscribe button to see the future projects. Thanks to all the members that make this project possible. And I will speak to you guys in the next video. Goodbye.